Mr. Carlson? Yes. You must be Tim Hoskins' sister, here to find out why he did so poorly on his latest assignment. But your voice sounded different on the phone, and I think we agreed to meet tomorrow? My name is Catherine, and I'm not Tim Hoskins' sister. Nice to meet you, Catherine. You can call me John. Okay, John. I'm conducting an independent press investigation about Lisa Fremont, the girl who went missing, and... Excuse me for interrupting, Catherine, but do you know what time it is? Quarter past four. Oh. What's wrong? Nothing. It's just that I have an important meeting at 5.30, and I can't be late. I have some reports that I need to grade before the meeting, and my lock needs to be fixed. I'm just too busy to talk with you today. How about tomorrow? No, wait. I'm seeing Miss Hoskin tomorrow. How about sometime later in the week? Later in the week? Listen, John, what if I help you now and while I'm helping you, we'll talk? Great idea. But first, I need to find my glasses. The kids hid them around here somewhere. Are these your glasses? Yes. Thanks a lot. So what do you want to know about Lisa? Did you notice anything unusual the day she disappeared? Unusual? Hmm. Let me think. What time is it? 4.35. I'm running out of time. And the batteries in my clock died two days ago. I know I've got some rechargeable batteries here somewhere, but where? Let me help you find them. That would be great. I'll start grading the reports in the meantime. I really appreciate your help. It was embarrassing asking everyone what time it was. Now I should have enough time to grade all the reports, and we'll still have time to talk. Except a few of the reports are missing. I must have misplaced them. Okay, I'll look around for them. Great! That looks like all of them. Now I just need to grade them. By the way, these reports are about Aesop's fables. Are you familiar with them? Of course! You are? Yes, here's a quote. No evil, whether it be small or large, ought to be tolerated. That's right. You know, something strange happened in my class the other day. One of my students, Tim Hoskin, the boy I mentioned earlier, he knows a lot about literature. But he likes to fool around. This time he mixed up some lines from one of Aesop's fables in his paper to illustrate his idea of Aesop's writing style. Sounds interesting. May I take a look? Go ahead. It would help me a lot if you could correct the sequence in his paper. I got it! Excellent! 
You've been a great help. So do you remember anything else? Yes. The last day that Lisa came to school, I saw this car outside. I'd never seen it in this neighborhood before. It didn't seem unusual to me at the time, but now that you've asked, I guess it was a little odd. A car? Do you remember what kind of car it was? I'm not sure, uh, but it was black. No, actually, I think it was dark gray. Or was it? I'm not sure. It was definitely an expensive car. I noticed it because it looked expensive. That's all I can tell you. Not even the make of the car? No, I'm sorry. Was it parked outside this window? Yes, right there, very close. I must have seen its license plate. I think the first letter was a V, but I'm not sure. I don't want to mislead you. Thanks anyways. A dark gray, expensive car. That's right. Do you remember anything else out of the ordinary that day? Mm, no, nothing that I can think of. What time is it? <laughs> Sorry, I forgot my clock is now fixed. Let me walk you to the exit. Hi, Catherine. Good evening, Grandma. How did your visit at the school go? I talked to Lisa's teacher, Mr. Carlson, but I didn't learn very much. What did you find out? You might have learned more than you think. Well, he remembered that he saw a car he had never seen before near the school building on the day Lisa disappeared. The car stopped right outside his classroom window, but he couldn't remember the license plate number or even the make of the car. Although he does remember seeing the license plate clearly. Did he remember anything at all? He said the car was dark gray and looked expensive. See? That's something. Did he remember anything else? Nope, that was it. So what do we do now, Grandma? Mr. Carlson would probably remember the license plate number in a dream if he saw it clearly that day, like he claims. Our subconscious stores a multitude of minor details we think we've forgotten a long time ago. How can we get him to remember what happened that day just by dreaming? And how can we get him to memorize it all and tell us? I think you saw that girl in a dream for some reason. You should try to see if you can see Mr. Carlson's dream. How do I do that? I don't know. I met a man who could see other people's dreams once when I was doing some research for a story I was writing. How did he do that? He didn't tell me the specifics. I think before going to bed, he invoked certain associations identified with the person whose dreams he was trying to see. Well, there's no harm in trying. Okay, I'll try. Good night, Catherine. Good night, Grandma. Sweet dreams. Okay, now where am I? It looks like John's classroom, but I'm not sure. Yes. It definitely looks like his classroom, only I'm seeing double. Well, I'm seeing two of certain objects anyway. I guess dreams work in mysterious ways. I need to get rid of all these pairs of objects so they won't get in the way of Mr. Carlson's memories. Now this looks more like the classroom I saw this afternoon. That's weird. There are two identical classrooms, but something seems different. It looks like one is the classroom remembered by John, and the other is the classroom stored in his subconscious. I think the differences may reveal something important. It's working. I never thought it was possible to get information from someone else's subconscious. Now that I know what kind of car it was, I can try and find out the license plate number.
Great! Now that I know the license plate number, I should be able to figure out who drove it to school that day.